The 2024 FRC build season is well underway. Week 1 starts in less than a month, and teams by now are finalizing designs, prototyping, and getting bots together, right? Right, teams? Just so you know, you're not wedded to one idea. You are allowed to redesign your bot if your team just ain't feeling it. But with all the initial prototypes coming out, I got my eye on some of these designs. I've been keeping up with so many FRC teams and RI3D teams. So I've seen a bunch of robots. A bunch of robots. Now I would design my own based off of the attributes that I've seen in some of these bots. But that's a design team thing. I'm a programmer. First things first. Drivetrain. Can't have a robot if it don't move. Granted. I've had bad week ones as well. But if you want to score points, you gotta move. The magic number is 18. You want your alliance to score 18 game pieces for one ranking point. Cooperation makes it 15 game pieces, but that's if and only if the other side also pushes the cooperation button. So if scoring is split equally, going off of this 18 figure, that means six rings per robot on your alliance. Doesn't matter where the ring goes, so we're not worried about shooters yet. Over the last few years, we've seen the decline of tank drive and west coast drive in favor of swerve, and I feel like that will be so true with Crescendo. This year, especially compared to other challenges, seems like the swerviest swerve to ever swerve swerve swerve. Swerve is the meta, and will continue to stay the meta. Swerve is love, Swerve is life. All roads lead to Swerve. Now intake. Lots of people have their takes on top loading versus bottom loading. The official kit bot this year is top feed only. I'm big on getting them from the floor since you want to crank out cycles really quick and you're not going to be able to rely on the human player for all of that. I also have some strategy I've been thinking about that necessitates being able to pick up from the floor. There is still discourse on over the bumper versus under the bumper. Honestly, I see no difference. It just comes down to what you want for your bot. The University of Minnesota's bot didn't seem to mind the height. The rule for bumpers, I believe, is no more than three inches off the ground. And the rings are two inches thick. Just have the intake on the opposite side of the shooter, so the robot doesn't need to turn around to score the high goal. I'm personally going with over the bumpers because I want to see these robots with arms. And for bots with arms, we gotta talk about the Quakas. When I saw this bot, I knew this design was gonna go far. Having the intake feed right into the shooter means the robot doesn't need to turn around to score high. But having the intake as an arm means that the robot is also able to score in the low goal as well. This bot can also be our segue into Autonomous because I thought the Quokka's three ring auto was going to be the be all end all for teams. Until 1678, the Citrus Circuit showed off their five ring autonomous just six days after kickoff. Now, bear in mind, they made this challenge. I'm not sure if this gives them the advantage or disadvantage, honestly. They could have just dusted off their 2021 bot for all we know. They censored it with the logo of their game design, except for the fact that they faded in the video and the logo as two separate layers. You gotta nest your sequences, people. That gave eagle-eyed viewers on Chief Delphi exactly one frame of perfect opacity that can then get brightness and grain adjusted and whammo, the robot that shoots five rings. A lot of effort to see a robot that you might not actually see in competition. Not sure if stealing signs is gonna be the best course of action, cause you know what happens when you steal signs. You win a national championship over my UW Huskies. The, sorry, the UW Huskies, where was I? Five rings in 15 seconds got the nerds on all the forums losing their minds, thinking that no one can top this and then bread tops this with a six ring auto. 
Six rings in 15 seconds. If they're able to pull this off in competition, it is over. If I'm on an alliance with bread, I am having my robot shoot its shot and then getting out of the way. That's a potential for eight rings in autonomous for the whole alliance. Once Teleop hits, I am hitting that cooperation bonus immediately. Halfway there for a ranking point. Again, if the other side presses, which I would do if I were against Bread, because we would have a lot of catching up to do if we wanted the win. Speaking of scoring, the strategy I had in mind. Every time two rings are scored in the low goal, a human player can push a button to start a 10 second countdown where scoring is increased. Every time. Some of these early bots don't seem to have much interest in scoring low, but you need to for that bonus. Each bot can only have one ring in possession at a time. 10 seconds is not enough time to get any more than two cycles out. So what I'm theorizing is a bot to get quick cycles going, but instead of scoring them right away, they stockpile them in their area, wait for the 10 second bonus to hit, and then just rapid fire them off only holding one at a time and then do that every time you score two in the low goal, every time you hit the 10 second bonus, just rapid fire. That being said, no idea how defense is gonna go. We all hear that defense wins championships. I guess it just disrupt the other side's cycles as much as possible. Now for hanging. Hooks work well. I'd go for two of them to get a more secure hold on the chain but not too wide because we still want other bots to join for the double or triple. Don't know how buddy climbs will work. The Quokka's got a semblance of a buddy system that attaches to a robot and then an arm braces the underside of the stage while they hang. Now rules say you can't grab or affix any part of the stage that isn't the chain, but there's no rule for bracing against the stage but you also gotta make sure you don't bend or damage any part of the field. I'm sure some teams out there will get something going for a buddy climb like this. I'm certain week zero will have triple climbs. I think the bots will just have to get nice and cozy for that. So yeah, that's the check-in. Have fun teams, good luck in this back half of the build season. Make sure you actually take breaks, drink water, and stretch. Maybe step outside, touch some grass, you know? I wish I had grass to touch when I was on an FRC team. And remember, gracious in victory, professional in defeat, amen.